<laughs> it's very cool. Thanks, mate. It's, it's petite. It is but, petite. But nice. Um, you've got, well, piano, like yeah. an actual piano. Where's this from? It, it, I found it in a place in North ah, Wales. Ah, Chapel and Co. It's a, a chapel something. I don't know. I bought it off eBay when I was drunk. You look like you're a bit of an amplifier boss. I love amps. It's kind of one of the mm -hmm. things that I, I get most excited about. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your amps. Because um, okay, yeah, well, you're the amp guy, aren't I you? I am the, the uh, apparently so. These two amps actually belong to Mike Venart, who is um, a very good friend of mine, and he plays uh, live guitar for Biffy Clyro, there's a name drop for you. Um, so that's a Fender bass breaker, really good for like um, clean tones and stuff like that. That is probably the nicest orange head I've ever heard in my life, mm -hmm. which is a Retro 50, it's a custom thing. Um, apparently, I think it's based on the old 70s OR 120s, but I'm not 100% sure, sounds really beautiful. That in the corner there is my little Soldano Astroverb combo, this looks so cool. which is, it's really nice, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I did buy it partly because of how cool it looks because it is cool uh that's like a really aggressive ac30 kind of thing so it's got loads and loads of gain on it but also does the chimey ac30 thing really nicely but um yeah and then this big old bass cab everyone needs gonna one have a big bass yeah, cab exactly a big ashton thing yeah. thanks to lee from ashton for helping us out with that but anyway you this studio some... i've got drums well, you've got some drums which is uh, nice yeah. because always good to have a nice kit a nice house kit yeah um it's kind of it works its way onto lots of records that drum kit yeah. i've had that since uh I, since i was a wee boy actually i think i was about 17 when i bought right. that drum kit okay. and, and i i'm i wouldn't say i'm a hoarder but when i buy something that i like i don't get yeah. rid of it so that's well, this Bass drum's super deep and yeah. super small. It's a twenty. Um, it's a twenty by twenty, yeah. which makes it a, a real little little cannon, basically. Yeah. So it's great for rock music because you get loads of um, bump, but it's really rounded sounding as well. Yeah. Because I, I I I like drums to still have a bit of like depth and character to them rather than sort of just sure. sort of slappy kind yeah. of like rock kick drum thing. So it's nice for that. Well, I always like recording with small, small yeah. drums for rock music. Yeah, yeah. Just, into the boudoir. <laughs> Hi. It's very much a boudoir, actually. It is a boudoir. It's, it's very it's intentionally kind of... a boudoir. But yeah, I just wanted to create a nice sort of cosy uh, environment, and and uh, you know, I'm going to be in here a lot, so yeah. I thought, well, I might as well make it feel nice yeah. and and be somewhere that I actually feel comfortable sitting and in. It, and... It's got the kind of production studio vibe in that it's like all your things that you want are just yeah. super close. Yeah, I mean that's another thing. Like ergonomics is quite important mm. to me when it comes to kind of recording because I, I, you know, I like to work. I like I don't like things to kind of get in the way of like the recording mm. process and the creative process really. So I like to be able to just kind of go right. That's the thing we're going to use and get on with it. And um, so it's quite handy having all of that just yeah. sort of where it is and and stuff. And I've got tie lines for amp heads so I can put the amp in here which is nice so yeah. when i'm recording guitars and things um like my the pre's i've got are just pretty straightforward simple things they don't have a lot of eq or anything like that on the way in mm -hmm. because um i don't have any of that stuff <laughs> so uh <laughs> but when i'm doing guitars i use the eq on the amp all the time like that's the main right. thing that i kind of um do really and it, i love having that separation and having the amp in front of you so you can just go yeah cool and uh, uh a, a very impressive pedal board here i mean i can demonstrate some of this sounds yes if you want me to do let's, that. let's, be a bit more let's unleash the telecaster right, okay this is my my oldest guitar i own as well uh i got this when i was 14 or 15 <laughs> something like that it's my favorite guitar in the world um so i mean that's my like normal <laughs> That's just my sort of drive tone mm -hmm. that I use kind of most of the time. So the other thing, the Pog is kind of doing, go away cable. Pog's a... So that's one I use quite a lot. Uh, it's good for riffs like, um, can I play, can I play my band's riffs? Is that okay? Is that, cop is, oh. it, is that bad? I mean, I don't know. I think we, I think we, we can try it. Can I 
played that with for a while, so <laughs> not very well delivered. But um, yeah, so I use that a lot, really. I mean, probably too much, to be honest. It's one yeah. of those sounds that I sort of feel like I, I sort of rely on, but I, mm. I, it's good. It feels nice. So the other thing I did quite a lot, which is absolutely fucking disgusting. Can I swear? Sorry, I just did. Please do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this guy. Bleed so it out with a guitar. Too. The, uh, the 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 one thing I will say about this board, which annoys me, is that I haven't got it set up in the way that I normally do. So so this is this corn star, which is like a, a, a it's more gain basically. Mm. Um, it's not in the loop of the noise suppressor because of how it's all configured. So it's actually, it's quite, it's quite noisy. Oh, okay. It's not too bad actually, because the amp isn't wound up all the way at the moment. But I mean, this sound is like. Um. Do we know? <laughs> what's it based on? Yeah, what's the, what's the, what's the, what, what, what is it? What what's it going? So the it's the, the whammy, uh, the corn star, sorry, yeah. that. I, I should have said actually the whammy is set to like a whole octave down as well. Oh, okay. So, there's no, so, so the corn star wasn't doing all of that on its own. The corn star is made by Green Carrot Pedals and it's like a plexi, uh, Marshall, like a really wound up Marshall plexi. Oh, okay. Or JCM 800, sort of, you know, just classic yeah. Marshall tone, um, which, you know, you've got a lot, haven't you? It's, it's, it's absolutely a lovely sound. So, so here's a question. Yeah. When recording, it's always really easy to overdo the game, and you do a lot of heavy music. Yes. What kind of levels of gain? How do you judge the level of gain that you need? Well, the thing is, most of my pedals, or most of the way that I do things, is I have quite low gain sounds generally. So, the, the my main drive, which is the Tim, is a transparent mm. overdrive. So it's it's not high gain pedal. Yeah. It's quite low because I I always want there to be that articulation mm. in there. I want you to be able to hear the attack of the notes and things like that. I usually use guitars with quite low output pickups and things like that, so it doesn't get too mushy. Mm -hmm. There are times where you want a big dirty humbucker, but for me, I prefer the articulation of like um like this kind of amp, which is essentially a single channel amp. Uh, it's not too fussy. It doesn't have like loads and loads of layers and different gain levels and stuff like that. So like the way I normally have things set up, I'll go back to there and I'll just take that out so you can just hear like. So that's usually a, a stockish kind of thing. So it's a little bit broken up, but it's not super dirty. And then that just is adding. So I like pedals that push the front end of the amp a bit more. Yeah. So it gives the, the amp is kind of generating more of the gain than the yeah, pedal yeah. is in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah um plus the other thing is when you're using single coil guitars a lot of the time there's only so much gain you can get away with anyway before it sounds absolutely horrible so usually you just use your intuition and sort yeah. of have a look around so this i mean this amp does actually surprisingly clean up quite well for an amp that's supposed to be quite dirty uh... <laughs> And it's not like blisteringly loud in no. the live room because there are some people who will just record it full whack, you know, with well, the, the tube amp guys or whatever. I mean, um, I have actually turned the amp down <laughs> quite a lot from where I normally have it just because we've been going in and out of the yeah. room. And it's Tom Peters. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Tom. Hi, Josh. Um, How are you? Uh, I'm good, thank right, you. And cool. yourself? Uh, yeah, great. Thank you. <laughs> good. <laughs> this is Crapdoor Studios, as it we is. can see. Um, so, yeah, what have you been doing then? What, what, what's this is, this is an impressive wall of amps amplification that you've got here. Yeah, I mean, it's not all mine, but it's nice. I get to use it, so I'll pretend it's mine. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm standing by my amps. What do you mean, what am I doing? Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> tell us about your amps, because um, okay, yeah, well, you're the amp guy, aren't I you? I am the, the uh, apparently so. Yeah, yeah the guitar um, tone Yeah, I like guitar chap. tones. Um, these two amps actually belong to Mike Venart, who is um, a very good friend of mine, and he plays uh, live guitar for Biffy Clyro. There's a name drop for you. Um, so that's a Fender bass breaker, really good for like um, clean tones and stuff like that. 
that is probably the nicest orange head I've ever heard in my life, mm. which is a retro 50. It's a custom thing. Um, apparently, I think it's based on the old 70s OR 120s, but I'm not 100% sure. Sounds really beautiful. That in the corner there is my little Soldano Astroverb combo, this looks so cool. which is it's really nice. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I did buy it partly because of how fucking cool it looks, because <laughs> it is cool. Uh, that's like a really aggressive AC30 mm. kind of thing, so it's got loads and loads of gain on it, but also does the chimey AC30 thing really nicely. But um, yeah, and then this big old bass cab, everyone needs to have a big bass yeah, cab, exactly a big Ashton thing. Yeah. Thanks to Lee from Ashton for helping us out with that. But anyway. You've this studio. Some... I've got drums. Well, you've got some drums, which is uh, nice yeah. because always good to have a nice kit, a nice house kit. Yeah, um, it's kind of, it works its way onto lots of records, that drum kit. Yeah. I've had that since uh, I, since I was a wee boy, actually. I think I was about 17 when I bought right. that drum kit. Okay. And, and I, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a hoarder, but when I buy something that I like, I don't get yeah. rid of it. So that's... Well, this... Bass drum's super deep and yeah. super small. It's a twenty. Um, it's a twenty by twenty, yeah. which makes it a, a real little little cannon, basically. Yeah. So it's great for rock music because you get loads of um, thump, but it's really rounded sounding as well. Yeah. Because I, I I I like drums to still have a bit of like depth and character to them rather than sort of just sure. sort of slappy kind yeah. of like rock kick drum thing. So it's nice for that. Well, I always like recording with small, small yeah. drums for rock music. Yeah, it yeah, just seems to. Seems to work. Give a give a good sound, and Absolutely. you've got you know a couple of Selection snares and things. Bits. Yeah, I've uh, got um, Tama. That Tama's my favourite snare. It's base. I think it's basically a Black Beauty ripoff mm. or like a four hundred two or whatever the Ludwig yeah. style thing. Um, mm -hmm. Steel shell. Yeah, quite cheap, but just goes off like a rocket. Really yeah. nice. This is a new drum that I need to clean up. I don't know how it's going to sound, but I think it's going to be good. And it's got a little <laughs> leather square on it, which <laughs> counts for something, right? Uh, and then lovely little vintage Sonor uh, rack tom, 12 inch rack tom, which uh, my mate found for 20 quid. Greg, the drummer in my band, found for 20 quid in an antique shop. So I bought it off him. Yeah, uh, that's the place to shop. Yeah, uh, and then that's the matching like little cool. 10 inch rack tom, cool. which is great for like fusion and things like that. So it's a it's a petite studio. You've it got is. a piano and got obviously studio piano. two that's in use on yes. the other side. <laughs> um, uh, so you've. You've kind of got like a, a wooden finish on, on here. I mean, yeah. you did all the build yourself. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. did. Yeah. So me cool. and uh, my my dear old daddy helped yeah. me quite a lot as well, yeah. which is really because he's, he's pretty handy. So we, um, in fact, you can see by the holes in the ceiling that I haven't fixed yet. But, um, <laughs> there was, there used to be another wall here. So right. I pulled that okay. wall down to kind of extend yeah. the, the live room and then uh, put, that's the the wall into studio two yeah. otherwise known as my cupboard <laughs> which is full of stuff <laughs> um uh so that yeah i mean a lot of this the wood and stuff there's a lot of aesthetic mm. kind of decision making going yeah. into it really but it's it gives a really, it a vibe and it feels really nice cool studio yeah, and you've much. been here how long uh just over uh, just under a year actually yeah so um uh it was one of those it was like I, was, I had loads of work on anyway, so yeah. I've been sort of chipping away at it over the yeah. last year, and then it was kind of back end of, of last year that yeah, I sort of sure. said, right, officially, this is this is a studio. And because this was a long time coming in the in the making, it, wasn't it? It, was, it what's the story was, yeah, there is. So um, in 2018, uh, I lost my best mate Dan. Mm. Um, we were like really, really close pals. Uh, he was in a band called Cleft. We used to tour together all the time. And he was a recording engineer himself. Um, in sort of 2013, 2014, we talked about and got really, really close to opening a studio together ourselves um, in Salford, in, in, well, not in yeah. Manchester, in Salford. Um, that unfortunately didn't end up happening um, for various reasons. And not long after that, Dan got sick and mm. he, he sort of had about three years of, of battling cancer and uh we thought we thought he'd he got past it but as often happens it kind of came back and in, in 2018 we lost him in, mm. in october so the whole sort of impetus behind this was was how can i honor my my pal dan in, yeah. in the best way possible and and this was sort of what i came up with so trapdoor studios wow, um, it's, a, hmm? it's a cool place and it's named after it's named after a cleft song yeah so trapdoor is one mm. of clef's like more i don't know um yeah one of their bigger bigger tunes always sure. used to go down really well live and stuff cool. like that so 
it seemed a fitting a fitting tribute yeah. to the guy really um and uh, uh yeah not long after i i kind of took the place on i i ran an indiegogo kind of project yeah, to, remember, to get yeah. some funding together um and so this kind of sign that we've got up here all these people kind of contributed sure. to the indiegogo which is really nice so there's a few bands on there cool. and a few friends and, and yeah. stuff like that which is pretty nice Brilliant. Um, yeah so that's trap Bell studios